Welcome to Blaze the Trail Podcast, bringing you authentic and vulnerable stories that will inspire you to breathe fire on this world and become your own hero. Here's your host, Blaze Hunter. Hello, welcome to Blaze the Trail Podcast. I'm Blaze Hunter, and I am a fertility expert. No, I don't help people get pregnant. This is a different type of expertise. I actually inspire women to birth confidence, to birth their dreams, passions, and goals, as well as help them discover peace amongst infertility. After going through my own sets of traumas and tragedies, dealing with a rare disease, and experiencing three miscarriages, I decided to take charge of my life and not let life happen to me, but rather become the hero of my own life. I am not barren. I continually birth my purpose every single day. So that's why I've created this show, to demonstrate how even though we experience setbacks and disappointments, we still have a destiny to birth. We just need to blaze the trail and be expecting. This podcast will inspire you to lean into your hardships and allow them to be the vehicle that transports you into becoming the hero of your life so you can breathe fire on this world. This week's episode is called, How Come? Yes, you heard it properly. So I don't know if anyone else is having this situation in their lives, but I am now at home being a stay-at-home mom full-time to a six-year-old who is not going to school anymore, who I'm the teacher, and being locked down with my child for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, has created opportunities for my child to ask, how come? This was a regular occurrence when she was about three and four, and we went through the why stage and the how come, and I thought we were through that. But no, it has made a sequel comeback of how comes and every single day I am faced with so many bullet rapid fire how come questions where I have no idea the answers I have no idea why she's even coming up with these questions and I was getting really frustrated and I was like stop with the how comes no more how comes today like you hit your limit that's it you're done And I was getting really angry and frustrated and I noticed myself getting more upset and agitated and irritated with this precious little six-year-old. And I had to take a step back and just know that we're both adjusting to a new normal here. We're both confined with one another and we're going to have to give grace to each other, to ourselves and to our children and our children to their parents and their mothers. And so (laughs) I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn this around because I often talk about um, we can't change our circumstances, but we can change how we perceive them, how we look at them. And I was needing a dose of my own medicine. I needed to change my perception about my child's questions and how comes. So I had the brilliant idea of like, you know what, I'm going to pull my six-year-old onto the podcast today and have her as a co-host. And we are going to go through random how comes. Yes, all the questions my six-year-old has wanted answers to, I'm going to sit down with her and talk about them with you today. Um, Even in this isolation time, there are opportunities to still connect. And that's what we're doing here today. I'm going to change how I perceive the annoyance of the how come questions. And we're going to make it a comical relief for everyone today. And really, let's learn something from a six-year-old. That Let's be curious again and ask questions. We have the time and the stillness to contemplate different thoughts. And this lesson from my daughter is Never stop asking questions. You don't have to just be a child to ponder different things and be curious. You can hang on to that as an adult and really embrace it and really learn something from a child and incorporate it in your adult life. So that's why I have my daughter here on the show. Her name is Lexi. Lexi is a six-year-old and is a tender heart kind, sweet, precious girl. She's a ball of laughs and aspires to be either an artist or a queen at the moment. She is the best thing I've ever done and inspires me every single day 
to stay present in the moment and breathe fire. Welcome, Lexi, to the show. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. Good. Thank you so much for coming on my podcast. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know how you were asking a lot of questions, weren't you? Yes. You were, yes. And was mommy getting a bit frustrated? Yeah. What did I tell you? Stop asking how come. (laughs) I was. I was getting quite frustrated with you. But then I turned around and said, hey, why don't we do a podcast together? And you come on the microphone with me and you ask away, right? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. This makes it a little bit of a different attitude. It changes the whole dynamic between my daughter and me that I've leaned into the how comes rather than resist them. And we're going to make it funny and fun for her. And I don't want to stop her being inquisitive and curious. So this is a way for me to learn to embrace the how comes. And I'm going to even ponder my own how comes later on in the show, having this time in the stillness has allowed me to have different thoughts, serious ones, really funny ones, and just asking the question. I don't have any of the answers, but I'm going to ask the question. And that's really important in this day and age. Never stop asking the questions. All right. So we're going to get started here, Lexi. Okay. You have a list, right? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So ask me your first, how come? How come? You wear glasses. Wear glasses. That's an interesting question. You've noticed mommy wears glasses every day, right? Yeah. That's because when I was about 20, I couldn't see very well while driving. So I, my eyes were hurting, so I had to go to the eye doctor. And do you know what the eye doctor is called? I, I forgot to. An optometrist. And I didn't have as good of an eyesight anymore, so he prescribes glasses. And that's why I wear glasses. Yeah. What's your next question? How come you talk to people? Talk to people? Like every day I'm on the phone? Yeah. In video chat? Yeah. That's because I'm in this isolation, and we're here because of the coronavirus, right? Yeah. And we can't go out very much, right? Yeah. We're stuck inside. So the way mommy stays connected with her friends and her tribe is that I like to talk to people and I stay connected even though we're in isolation. And that you still do Zoom calls and FaceTimes and WhatsApp chats with your friends, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool, right? It's staying connected. Yeah. Okay, what's your next question? How come... You need a tripod. <laughs> yeah, you noticed I have a little tripod today in my in my work stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's because mom does a lot of um like FaceTimes and Zoom calls. Yeah. And Facebook stuff, and I need it to put my phone in there so that my phone doesn't shake when I'm recording. Cool. Yeah, that's that's four. Okay, next question. How come there are plastic cups? Plastic cups. That's an interesting question. You know what? I think they made plastic cups a long time ago to be convenient, that you didn't have a glass on the road or at a picnic, but it's not really great for the environment. Do you know why? Why? You can't recycle it. Well, actually, you can recycle plastic. There are various plastics you can take to the recycling depot, but there still are some that can't be recycled, so it's not entirely great for our earth. But plastic is convenient. Do you know what convenient means? No. It means easier. Oh. Yeah. So it was probably made to make life a bit easier for moms, <laughs> but it's not so convenient for the environment, okay? okay. All right, next question. How, How come, come we have cars? Cars instead of? Horses. Oh, that's a great question. You just asked me that today, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, we used to have horses as a way to get around town and get places and carriages where the horses pulled the buggy. Yeah, but over time, people invented cars with engines and gasoline and then we can go further with a car so that's basically why cars were invented so we can go a lot further and travel all around our world and get different places and visit different countries and different neighbors and people and different sites in the area of the world and it was faster oh cool hey yeah next question Oh, how come you want flowers Flowers in the house? You've noticed I like my flowers, right? Mm -hmm. Does Daddy buy me flowers? Yep. Yep, and then I have some silk flowers to brighten up my area in here. Mm -hmm. I feel like you just don't get the brightness of being out and about and getting to enjoy spring, and I enjoy the colors of different flowers, so I like to have that in my home to make me happy. Oh. Yeah, isn't that cool? Do you like flowers? Yeah. What's your favorite flower? Uh, marigold. Marigold? Yeah. Oh, well, why? Well, because um, it re reminds me of the gold part in it, of the world it was of the word, um, um, it, um, it, um, reminds me it's gold and oh, stuff. Oh, that's pretty cool and sparkly. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And our last question that you have, how come we celebrate Easter? Easter. So I think many people have different reasons why they celebrate Easter. Do you know why? Why? Because some people just think about the Easter Bunny, and it's just a time to have a great meal and family time and have Easter eggs, right? Yeah. And we, our family, is Christian, and that means we believe in Jesus. Yeah. So remember how I told you about we honor the fact that Jesus made a sacrifice and gave his life for us? Yeah. And so that's why our family celebrates Easter is to honor and say thank you to Jesus for that sacrifice. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, but we can still have fun with the Easter Bunny and with eggs and chocolate eggs and decorating our eggs, right? Yeah, the Easter Bunny is actually real, but only um, that, um, girls or um, big girls or um Big boys can dress up like the Easter Bunny. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and I have some eggs. And we can do a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why. But many different people have different beliefs and mm -hmm. celebrate Easter for a different reason. But that's why Mommy and Daddy and you celebrate Easter, okay? Okay. Okay, cool. So, yes, this little exercise has really taught me about leaning in to that stillness and that time to ponder different things and I learned something from my daughter from Lexi of all these amazing questions and she just comes up with all of these crazy things every day and it's like how are you even thinking about that she asked me the other day like why do I have the picture frame on the left instead of the right why do I have a purple car instead of a black car and I'm like you know what those are really valid questions because you're just wondering and you're curious right yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I tapped into my inner child and I thought, okay, what are some questions that I think about and that I would like the answer to or just to pose? Maybe we don't even need the answer sometimes or can even get the answer, but it's worth posing the question. So we're in these times. We're in a global pandemic. We are shut down. This is unprecedented times. We've never seen this type of shutdown before. And I'm going to ask, how come we were so unprepared for this pandemic? Because so my previous career, I used to work in healthcare. And I remember being in the hospital working in a, in a administrative work and I was sitting there doing conferences and health and safety lessons and this was 20 years ago and 20 years ago they were prepping us for a new wave of a pandemic 
because the Spanish flu came in 1918, and 100 years later, they expect another world pandemic. Okay, it is 2020. We are only two years off 1918. We should have been more prepared for this in my mind. Like, why weren't we having all of these, you know, contingency plans and what they may look like if we knew it was coming in one way or another? So that's my question is, why such a lack of preparedness if we, if we were teaching people it was coming 20 years ago? So that's the question I have. I have no idea if there is an answer. I have no idea if there is a way to be prepared for anything like this. But I'm posing the question, how come? How come the TV channels are so bad during the shutdown? I mean, this is prime opportunity for different networks and stations to just put old reruns on of classic hit shows, to put on blockbuster movies you can't get on on your streaming apps like Netflix or Amazon Prime. Like, why is it that there's just basically the fireplace network that I have, yes, I admit, turned on because I've been so bored with the lack of TV programming. So how come the networks aren't getting on the ball with this one and putting on a lot of amazing shows, HBO reruns, like, oh my God, that would be amazing if we get a band of brothers and, you know, entourage and all these amazing HBO shows that are done, that are over, like Sex and the City. Why isn't it on HBO as reruns? Come on, how come? Next one, how come women are still still feeling so much pressure and self-conscious to stay in shape in this time. Oh my God, people, you don't need to run 10 kilometers to burn off all of the muffins you are eating because you're baking that for your kid at home. Like, let's face it. We are all going to gain weight here. It's okay. Take the pressure off. Stop putting the pressure on yourself. Stop feeling the pressure from outside sources. It's going to be okay. Even if you gain 15 pounds, it is not the ultimate crime in the world. So I really would like to know how come we're still putting that pressure on ourselves. Like, let's take the pressure off, women. We are beautiful. We are doing our best. We are conquering so many different things that are coming at us. Let's take the pressure off of trying to stay in shape and not gain 5, 10, 15 pounds. Okay. I have another how come. How come when I'm recording this podcast, my dog decides it's a good time to throw up in the middle of the living room? Like seriously? How come? Why does it always seem like that? How come, Lexi, every time in a day you are doing your own thing and you're working on artwork and the mummy has to go to the bathroom, that's when you need a snack? How come? Well, it's sometimes I get hungry, and then when I do it, um, sometimes it's almost like school. I like sometimes in shows, they like, after they do something, they go to the bathroom. Yeah. But I, but, um, I wanted a snack because I was hungry. Yeah. <laughs> it just so happens that mommy is here all the time except those few minutes I go to the bathroom and that's when you get hungry, right? Yeah. How come? I have no idea. Another one. How come it took me two hours to write a half an hour speech? I'll explain. So I was doing an online conference last weekend and I had to write my little 20 minute half an hour speech, right? And I'm with my kid 24-7. So I put on Frozen 2, and I'm like, you watch Frozen 2. Mommy's going to write her speech. All will be good. The movie ended, and I'm still figuring out my speech. And I'm like, literally, how is this even possible? The whole speech is only half an hour. The whole movie was two hours. It doesn't make sense. How come? And I could have gotten really frustrated, and I was going in that direction of feeling overwhelmed, like I can't get my work done, and I just had to sit there and find the comic relief. That is, that's kind of funny. You can't finish a half an hour speech in a two-hour movie. It doesn't seem to make sense. So I'm finding the comic relief in this, asking the how comes, but leaning into, you know what, it's okay. And I'm going to find the joy and the laughter in the question 
and I'm not going to always get the answer. Next, how come? I've been doing a lot of cooking, as most of you have been, because no one's going out. And sometimes I cheat and get the bagged Caesar salad package with the bacon bits and the croutons and the dressing all included in there. And I'm about done. I'm going on strike with the Caesar salad packaging because how come it seems to be every time I get a package of Caesar salad, it's like you get the bottom half of the lettuce head. Have you ever noticed you never get the crispy, leafy part of the the lettuce, you're getting like the core and the chunk and the ends, and I'm done. Like it's like this isn't even lettuce. This is the discards. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go buy my pack of lettuce heads, the lettuce hearts, and make my own salad and then enjoy the leafy green lettuce again. So how come whoever makes those packaging, where are you getting the lettuce from? Is it just the discards and you're making a killing all? all of us. So how come? How come I can't figure out Instagram stories? I honestly have an issue with this. I look like a moron because people are sending me their tags of stories and I have no idea how to save it and upload it because sometimes I literally post it three times. Like my story is on three times. And I'm like, I literally don't know what I'm doing. I've asked other people. They don't know either, so I'm not the only one. I might need a millennial to help me, or maybe even my six-year-old can figure it out. It's seriously hilarious of all these little questions that I've been pondering and coming up with because I have the time, and I'm leaning in to this funny situation we are all in, leaning into my inquisitive daughter having different questions about all sorts of things. And I'm allowing that connection. I'm giving her the space to ask the question. I'm not shutting her down anymore. I'm not saying to her, no more how come. I'm saying, you know what, let's write them down. Let's, let's ask, let's answer your questions that we have because I encourage your curiosity and I want you to be inquisitive at all times. And I know it's a crazy time that we are living in and I really just want to tell people, really embrace the situation and find joy and peace in this chaos. And sometimes it's just finding the humor in it. Sometimes you can't really find the peace, but we can find the humor and be in the moment with your children. And that's what I'm trying to do. I don't get it right all the time. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to be here now. And that's funny because I wrote about that in my book, Heroin. Embrace your flaws and own your awesome. Chapter 10 is entitled Be Here Now, Finding the Calm in the Chaos. And like I said, sometimes you can't find the calm, but you can find the humor and the joy. So I'm going to read an excerpt out of my book, Chapter 10 here. For so long, I wondered why I was going through so many hardships. I felt I shouldn't be experiencing that magnitude of problems. I couldn't focus on growth because I had tunnel vision on my struggles. The fact is, None of us are immune to difficulties. We might not see them, but everyone has their own trials and challenges. It's up to us to reflect and look beyond the problem to find the learning opportunity. Sometimes you will look back on your life. You see patterns of consistent setbacks, but there will be a day when you get it. I find I'm constantly faced with situations where my self-confidence is challenged and I need to stand up for myself. Another big learning opportunity for me is figuring out when to stop trying to control everything and learn to surrender to life. Oh boy, do we need that right now, right? I can't stop my obstacles, but I can control my reaction to them. We need to discover the calm and the chaos. It's so amazing when in a moment of complete sorrow, you can achieve clarity. These situations are in your life to challenge, grow, and strengthen you. I had to learn to breathe in these moments and find the calm. Learning how to breathe is so vital to our entire mind, body, and soul. Breath is our connection to life and air. Just being still and breathing calms the whole nervous system. When you breathe deeply and slowly, you allow more oxygen into your blood, which helps you think clearly rather than experiencing an overload of emotions. Breathing allows you to cut through the distractions and find the pulse of your being. 
there will always be difficulties in our lives, so we need to work on calming our reactions to them rather than trying so hard to prevent the problems. We know that challenges are inevitable. We need to change the way we think about the problems. Problems are not there to destroy us, but to teach us. I don't know why bad things happen to good people. I don't know why some people die before their time or tragedy strikes like a global pandemic right now. But I do know there is something to learn from all of these situations, even if it's just to appreciate life more. We can't let these tribulations take us down. There is a unique balance between being grounded and flexible. How do we plant our roots and remain strong while being flexible enough to go where life takes us? I revert to an, an analogy I made back earlier in this book, and it's about the tree. A tree is so strong with its roots, but also allows the wind to move through its branches rather than fight against it. We need to breathe in these moments of sadness and trust. Life isn't happening to us, but for us. Are we willing to dig our roots in down deeper and learn valuable lessons in the storms? Or are we going to topple over with every strong wind that comes our way? Be a tree. Be a river. A river flows freely and doesn't resist. But don't discount the strength of a river either. It is so powerful it can erode mountains. Draw on your strength when you are facing troubles and breathe. Find the calm and therein lies your strength. Finding the calm is the first step, but it's not the only one. I've had to come to learn that to truly live and enjoy life, we need to take a cue from Vivian Green and dance in the rain. Life lessons are unique to everyone, but the common thread is that we all need to discover joy in the hardship. It's so easy to enjoy life when things are going our way. We do have a good job and we have a wonderful partner and we get pregnant and we have children and our health is great and we have financial freedom. But when one or the several of those things are affected, we seem to lose our happiness. During my sickest of moments, when I couldn't peel myself off the couch and another month passed that I didn't get pregnant, I had a choice whether to be happy or sad. I could have a pity party and feel life has ripped me off or I could push through that misery and find happiness amongst the sorrow. We all have that choice. Of course, there are these moments when we are down and need to cry it out, and that's okay. But it's whether we choose to stay in that mindset or put our big girl panties on, so to speak, and fight through those tears to find the beauty in our lives. There's always another outlook, another take, or another viewpoint. Sometimes it takes me longer than others to discover a positive viewpoint on things, but when I decide not to let life take me down, that alternative outlook seems to find me, and it's the joy that scoops me up and saves me. Joy clears the clouds in misery. There's joy everywhere. We just need to allow it to enter in. Joy is safe. Joy is our strength, and part of that joy is really tapping in to the things that are happening in our everyday lives because of being in the shutdown. And one of those was my daughter asking so many how comes. And I had a choice. Do I stifle her, get mad and frustrated and shut her down? Or do I lean into the joy and let this become a joyful experience for the both of us and let my curiosity come out again and become a child again and have childlike questions and curiosity and be inquisitive? And I'm deciding that's a better outcome than me stifling my kid and creating friction in the home. So joy is our strength, everyone. That's it for this week's episode. Recap what we talked about. Children are insightful and they have depth. Give them the space and this time to ask questions. We can learn from our kids. Get curious again. I'm reminded of the old children's series, Curious George. And it's really important to be curious in our lives, even as adults. Whatever stage we're going in through in our lives, be curious. Never stop being inquisitive. Thank you, Lexi. She's gone now, but I appreciate my daughter coming on the show today and asking her questions. And I'm giving her that space to ponder life's questions as a six-year-old. That's it for this week's episode. Challenge yourself to be vulnerable. Lean into the difficulties and have those open conversations so we can rise up as the heroes of our lives and let us breathe fire together. 
If you enjoyed this show, please subscribe and support Blaze the Trail podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Blaze Hunter. You've been listening to Blaze the Trail with Blaze Hunter. To learn more about how you can breathe fire and unleash the hero within, or to listen to past episodes, visit blazehunter.com.